Hello, everyone. My name is Antonio Paganelli. I'm a PhD student at PUC Brill in Brazil. This work was done in conjunction with the University of Waterloo in Canada, and it's about a self-adaptive method for improving the use of resources in patient monitoring solutions using a scoring system. The agenda for this section will see the motivation for this work and the problems it tries to solve, some related work, our solution proposal, the experiments performed, the achieved results, and our conclusions. Wearable sensors can capture health markers such as vital signs, then can be applied to the prevention and treatment of chronic diseases and during epidemics, for example. However, the constant monitoring of several health parameters in a crescent number of people will generate huge amounts of data. These data are eventually clinically negligible or redundant, which would waste resource, deteriorate the performance of the solutions and incur and increase costs. Another issue is that the traditional patient monitoring system in hospitals generate an excessive number of alarms. It's reported that the patient may generate almost 800 alarms a day, which leads to a small ward with a few beds triggering one alarm every few seconds. This causes what is known as alarm fatigue, that's an extra burden on health professionals who may lose sensitivity to those alarms. Using the wearables, we can expect a high number of alarms as well. Investigating what is done in infirmaries, there is an extensive and validated use of scoring systems. They classify each monitory parameter using ranges of values that go from normal values to abnormal ones. Each range receives a score from 0 to 3. 0 represents normality, while the 3 is a critical deviation far from normality. These individual scores can be summed up and the result group it to better represent the patient's clinical condition. Using the composite score, the frequency of bad visits is defined. Previous studies used individual scores to filter data to be transmitted or not. Frequencies were attributed, considered the analysis of variance over nominal values or the stability of individual scores in previous periods. Nonetheless, in our previous work present last year, we utilized composite scores associated with fixed frequencies for sampling, processing, and transmissions. Alarms were verified at the processing rate. Like in our last work, the composite scores calculated in real time are used to regulate a self-adaptive method that manages sampling frequencies and alarms. Alarms are triggered only when a composite score is greater than the previous one. At the end of a period, the processing rate will reassess the frequencies for the next period, and the period size varies according to the composite scores. The higher the score, the shorter the period size. But now we handle alarms at sampling rate instead of period rate. We also implemented two strategies to avoid excessive alarms. A delay that returns the alarm and only sends it if the condition persists and a time window to prevent a new alarm of the same time from being triggered again within this window. To regulate frequencies, the idea is simple. Higher the risk, higher the monitoring frequency, and vice versa. In addition, even when the condition is critical, data can be very redundant. A second criteria, criterion can be applied regarding the similarity of monitoring parameters. We can use individual scores uh, of each monitoring parameter and store them in sets. Each set is formed during a period. So in a kind of a sliding window, 
uh, of the size of round, in this example, round size equals four, we calculate the difference between these individual scores. We see here that in period T, we have all zeros, and in T1, there are some difference and so on. So summing up all the difference, we got a result for each parameter in a round. These results are also sum up. So to get the similarity index that varies from zero to one, if the final result is lesser than 10, it's divided by 10, otherwise is one. The idea is the higher the similarity, the higher the frequency and vice versa. So for each composite score, we have a range of frequencies and an associated risk. To set up the sampling frequencies, use a quadratic Bezier distribution, which is solved by a simple second degree equation and three points. P0 is the minimal frequency, P2 is the maximum frequency, P1 is determined according to the patient's risk. P1 defines the shape of the distribution. Finally, in the x-axis, we have the similarity index to determine the exact frequency to be used in the next period of monitoring. Then, using our new method, we evaluate reductions in reads, messages, and payloads and alarms. We also measure the integrity of monitoring time, the alarm's precision and accuracy, and we utilize the Fisionet datasets MIMIC and MIMIC2 of 36 patients for 24 hours of monitoring and, and all the vital signs necessary to calculate the scores. We compare our algorithm to a baseline with the original data rate and no self-adaptive procedure and algorithms prescribed by Elgers, Habib, and Harp. In addition, we run our algorithm using two different configurations. The configuration A aimed at achieving high reductions and configuration B um, aimed at achieving lower error rates. These charts show the number of reads, payloads, and messages. The baseline is in orange at the bottom, and each algorithm results. Configuration A is in green and B in blue. We can see our algorithm results, which are at the top of the charts, uh, that it's achieved the highest reductions. For instance, means minus 81% of reads in A and minus 64% reads in B. Now we see the reductions in alarms compared to the baseline. The graph on the left shows a reduction of 8, 78% in configuration A and 68% in B. On the right, it shows the number of alarms avoided using the delay and redundant window strategies for each configuration. We can see that the redundant window strategy aimed at avoiding redundant alarms is more effective than the delaying approach. Well, looking at the monitoring integrity, we measure the time record in each composite score by the baseline system and our method in both configurations. The maximum mean error was 2.9% in configuration A, which was reduced to 2.2% in D. Yet, the absolute error was about 15% in configuration A and 72% in B. It means that if someone asks how long a patient was in clinical status in a specific score, you may find a different in record time between the baseline and our method up to 72%. Now let's take a look at the alarm's precision and accuracy. With lower sampling rates, the generate alarms may not be triggered when an event happens in the baseline system. Then we measure the error based on the number of alarms missed in a time window around the occurrence of one alarm in the baseline. In configuration A, where we got a huge reduction in samplings, 81%, in a two minute window, we missed 4.6% of the total number of alarms. 
and the highest error for one patient among the 36 was 17%. In configuration B, with 64% reductions in data, the error drops to 0.9% and 36 in any patient. The accuracy is the percentage of alarms of the same time regarding scores one, two, or three of the original alarm in the baseline. It varies from 76% to 8%. Concluding, our method overperformed previous work because the composite scores allow the use of lower frequencies for all sensors, even when the data uh, present high variance or instability. In addition, we reevaluate the frequencies in shorter periods when the frequencies are higher. So the algorithm has more chance to reduce samplings. In our future work, we will analyze the effects of these reductions in energy consumption in a prototype built with this algorithm embedded. Thank you. That's all for the section.